This week we are working on a Grand Design Imagine. And would you believe in a rig this small, we're gonna get 800 amp hours of battery and all the Victron stuff you could ever need for this rig. And we're not even taking up that much storage space. Let's check it out. I wanna do a quick note about why I do these videos at the stage that they are. Um, mostly this is when I've kind of figured out all the tough stuff. I know where AC lines are running, I know where the data lines are running, and everything's kind of sorted out. So uh, these are actually useful if you're gonna put solar and Victron equipment in a rig like this, this ideally this exact one, you'll have an idea of what to do and how to do it rather than discovering it along with me, which is also fun. Uh, we have one video where we did the entire process and most of it's just about exploring and figuring things out. But anyway, that's why we do that. So without further ado, let's uh, flip the camera around and get to the good stuff. Okay, uh, so yeah, we got a mess going on here, but we've got eight, no, not 800 amp hours, four 200 amp hour batteries. And those are those real thin, slim case design ones. And this is all in the uh, insulation space that's right here. Customer's not even giving up any extra storage at all for all that. Using 4 odd cabling on everything. Super overbuilt. That's the way we like to do it. And then we got all the Victron stuff over there. We'll get to that. Uh, had to pull the belly pan down to get our uh, lines through. This is pretty much the worst of it. I'm showing you this project because everything is torn apart and from this point on, everything goes back together. So we're, we're running from uh, over in the far corner there, all the way over here for AC and data lines. This is a 30 amp coach, so we only got to run 10-2 wire. Uh, here is our uh, Victron setup. We're not quite all the way there, there yet. Uh, we are also gonna be keeping the Furion charger in the system. However, this is gonna be a ground deploy setup. So we're gonna take the PV solar input, mount the, route those to the breakers, and then also route the new PV input to those breakers. So the customer can uh, have some ground deploy panels that is also protected and all that good stuff. Uh, you can see our Lynx distributor there. Oh, we got a red light. That's because they don't have a fuse there yet. That is going to be for the Coach DC. Uh, we got to get a cover on our uh, main fuse there. But everything else is going all right. We're gonna. That's the hole we're routing everything through. Don't have the AC lines landed there yet. That's going to be a pain in the butt. No doubt about that. But I like the way this looks. It's looking good. So inside here, it gets a little tricky. Had to do some exploratory surgery. I uh, explored back there. Don't take that cover off. Just a couple of screws, but that's where the smarts are for the, uh, uh, I think the lighting system. I'm pretty sure this panel controls it. I got a smart lighting system. Super jealous, I love those. Uh, used to be a TV there, but it fell down. No, just joking, I took it down over there it's fine but um we wanted to put the victron uh display right here so to do that we got to get hdmi and usb to here but there's no real storage there's no way to do it through here without exposing the wires and i like to try and hide them as best i can it's also important for the customer as it would for any customer Luckily, this wall is hollow, but to get at this wall, I had to undo some screws there and actually do some careful prying here. As you can see here, these are this wall is actually stapled from the bottom up to get access to that. So we'll uh, have to put that back down and uh, probably do some stainless screws back down through here to, to secure that up. And also it's weird, they just popped a whole bunch of staples in there for some reason, not sure why. The things they do in these is so weird. And then uh, anyway, that hole <clears throat> comes out right here and the AC and all the data lines are all coming out right there. So 
we are in good shape. We're in day two on this project and this represents about typically where we would be. Uh, for you, it may take a little bit longer, just, uh, you know, poking around. Ideally, you know, if you're not sure, don't drill. If you're, you know, don't want to put a hole through a tank or anything like that, uh, just take your time and uh, it'll all work out fine. And uh, also take a moment to subscribe to this channel if you like watching this kind of stuff or learning about DIY solar, uh, RV solar, batteries. I do experiments all the time, try to figure out what are the best panels to be using, all that kind of fun stuff. So definitely worth a subscribe, I feel. All right, here we go. We got uh, 800 watts here. And then we kept the uh, 165 watt panel and paired that with a little 100 watt Spartan panel. And what we get there is we're basically making a 200 watt equivalent to one of these because these are 12 volt panels, which means they run at 22 volts or so. You add those together, it equals about one of these. So these are running series, parallel these two together. So this array right here of four panels is a uh, 2S, 2S, and 1P. I don't know, it's a little confusing. It works though. Uh, in practice, what it means is uh, you can shade this part, any part of these panels, and nothing really happens to the array. You can shade this one panel, nothing really happens to the array, because both of these three panels are in parallel. <clears throat> and uh, so here's what, uh, here's how it works, or how it looks. I think we did good. It's pickup morning on this uh, Grand Design Imagine. Nice uh, little travel trailer. And uh, like I said, we put a lot of solar and uh, well, actually a lot of battery, plenty of solar for it. And uh, now it's all finished up. So to review, we've got 800 amp hours of battery in here. Where is it? All right, it's in that space right there. Took that wall out, built some framing. And uh, now it's all tucked away. Got the light switch working in there again, of course. Starting to put the customer stuff back in there. Here's where all the uh, Victron components are. In the other side. Got uh, two solar uh, breakers dis disconnects. One, of course, is for the MPPT there. And then the other is for the Furion MPPT that we kept. And then uh, we pipe that into these two right here so the customer can connect any other MC4 compatible uh, connector and just run it right down there. So they can have ground deploy planet panels as well. Got the Orion DC DC charger. Got some other uh, yeah, other wires and stuff going up, HDMI, USB, all going up to there to the servo. All in con uh, not conduit, uh, cable raceway. Got our links there with its light working. Got the main disaster fuse, disconnect, shunt, and then of course the multi plus. And we load tested all of this. It runs the air conditioner just fine. Something to keep in mind uh, when you are running heavy loads like that is the uh, the fuse area will get hot because it's just a thin piece of metal. Its job is to explode at a certain temperature. So it doesn't go from ambient temperature to horrible or to uh, exploding in an instant. It gradually goes up there. So something to keep in mind. And also one of the reasons why I like using four, four out cable on all this stuff for 12 volt just makes sense to me. Uh, looks like we gotta do a little bit of vacuuming here before we do final delivery. Oh, last thing I was gonna mention is the ceiling up here. Oh, it looks like my lens is a little dirty. We added a panel up there for the, uh, there's a rocker switch for the light on the outside of the RV and the tire monitoring system. Normally those are mounted right here, but obviously we didn't have room. Battery is disconnected and tucked away. 
on the wires there got this down here this is all buttoned up you never know we were in there re-spray foamed everything that needed to be resealed up here we are making some solar everything's working fine got uh, that all buttoned up back together got this area taken care of and there are a couple of scratches and things just for moving things around we did the best we could uh, but uh, there are no exposed wires on this install. I was actually worried we were going to have to run the HDMI and USB up out of here in the inside the cabinet and up. But we were able to make that work. And as a special treat, Coco got to meet the customer's dog who's also a St. Bernard. We love meeting uh, customer dogs and this was just a special treat. So thank you. That'll wrap up this project. And if you need any solar or uh, lithium batteries, Victron equipment, you want it installed on your rig, contact us at our website, sotasolar.com, S-O-T-A, solar.com. Uh, we also sell the equipment direct to you if you'd like, uh, and that helps us out a little bit. We do make a little bit on that, and uh, if nothing else, give us a subscribe. If nothing else, give us a subscribe and thumbs up, or leave a comment. Love to hear from you.